What are you looking at, butthead? So this is my review for the 1981 film Thief. This is directed by Michael Mann. This is actually his first movie. Uh, so I'll kind of get into that a little bit later with movie connections. Uh, but so yeah, this is his first feature length film from 1981. It's got James Caan as the main main actor here. He's a pretty big star by this point. He already did the first two Godfather movies. Uh, he did Rollerball and uh, a couple other things by this point. So he's a well-known actor. I like James Caan. I mostly only know him for like the Godfather movies and then later like The Way of the Gun and some other movies. So I was interested to see this uh, as Michael Mann's first film because I like all his movies are really good crime films and I think James Caan's a good actor. So right away this story is it feels really familiar now but I gotta assume that it was pretty original when it came out in 81 but I'll get to that a little bit later. So James Caan plays Frank and like the title implies he's a thief. He specializes in stealing diamonds and he has a partner played by uh, James Belushi. His name's Barry. A couple other guys he works with. He owns like a, a used car dealership or just a car dealership. I guess I don't know if it's used or not. But those are his partners. He has a friend named Okla. He's in the prison played by Willie Nelson. He doesn't have a big part. But there's not really a big, big cast either. And then one of our other main guys is Leo. He's played by uh, Robert Prosky. You'd recognize him if you saw him. He's an older guy. Let's see. I'm trying to think. Um, this is Doubtfire. Uh, I noticed him most from uh, The Last Action Hero. He plays Nick, the uh, usher in that. He's also in uh, Gremlins 2, the new batch. He's the guy that plays Dracula. So he's a recognizable guy. Might not know him by name. Most people probably don't. But you'd probably recognize him. Apparently this is his first movie, I think. He didn't start acting until really late in his life. So, anyways, his name's Leo. And he uh, approaches Frank and asks him if he wants to start doing jobs for him. Apparently Leo's a big wig, a big... I don't know if he's like a criminal, criminal world boss or underworld boss, whatever you want to call him. But he was kind of a guy that has his hands in a lot of things and just pulls a lot of robberies, I guess, and is the man about town. Um, and he asks Frank if he wants to do some jobs for him. Frank wants to get out of the business. He's kind of wanting to just, you know, hang up his guns or whatever and get out of town and just make some more money, but he doesn't really want to do this for much longer. So he's very hesitant to agree to Leo's terms, but he says he'll do one or two jobs, but they all have to be on his terms and everything like that, and then he's out. So that's the plan, but then Frank and Barry and a couple of other guys are going to go and steal a bunch of diamonds from this really impenetrable safe, and, you know, so that's pretty much the deal. They're just planning this job, and then, surprise, surprise, some things maybe go wrong later with the job in the terms of, you know, getting out of the business. Kind of a familiar, a familiar trope for this kind of heist movie, crime film. Then also, of course, there's a love interest in there. Her name's Jessie, played by an actress I didn't really recognize at all. The actress's name is Tuesday Weld. Kind of interesting, actually. I went, I just never heard of her, and she's the main female in this, and I was just a female actress, and I was just interested. I guess she has a really interesting backstory, that actress. I guess she was, like, an alcoholic by the time she was, like, 11, and was supporting her whole family through, like, her, she was, like, a child actress, and then or a child model, and then became an actress, and I just had a really crazy life. And then later she was getting all these big roles, like uh, the lead role on Bonnie and Clyde and all these big movies, but turned them down. Just kind of played by her own rules, just wanted to do whatever she wanted. But that's kind of besides the point. That's kind of an interesting backstory for this actress. That is the biggest downfall, in my opinion, of this film, is the romantic relationship between Frank and Jesse. It's very, it's handled really poorly. It's just very weird. It's really aggressive and abrupt and just super rushed because we see Frank in this diner one time, ask her if she wants to go out, and then they're like saying they love each other and he goes to like, he's supposed to meet her and misses a date, goes and just like really mean to her. And it is really weird because 
I got the impression that they'd never really met, never really like dated before. They just saw each other all the time at this diner. And then Frank is just like putting his whole life story out there for her and just saying, you know, I want to be with you. I want you to just go away with me. I'm going to have all this money. We can go start our life together. It just seems really weird and sudden. And if that's not the case, if they had some sort of relationship before, it was not conveyed very clearly. Because then they get married really quick. Uh, they're going to look for kids. They're going to adopt some kids. It's just really weird. I, I thought that was a really bad part. That was like the biggest detriment to the film is that part of the story. It's weird. There's also like some cops later come in and they're trying to pin this certain theft on Frank and all those things. And so kind of similar. The cops are just unexpectedly like super aggressive. I just kind of, I don't know if it's the acting that's bad, just like maybe because it's an early 80s film, but just kind of a weird, got a weird vibe from that as well. The The heist is pretty good. There's some really good shots. They're using um, like a big acetylene torch type thing. It's like the movie The Score. Um, it's like a big torch thing that they're using just to cut the door open. There's some really cool shots of like inside the safe when they're doing that. It has a pretty good soundtrack. The film has a good soundtrack by Tangerine Dream. Uh, they did a lot of scores in the 80s. But, um, so anyways, it's a good film. It's decent. But it's just really, really hard to ignore the fact that this is pretty much like a precursor to Heat and the score. So, obviously, Michael Mann's masterpiece is Heat with Robert De Niro and Bell Kilmer, Al Pacino... And this is pretty much beat for beat the same. It's not the exact same story, but you can definitely see where the material came from. So uh, James Kahn's character Frank is pretty much the same as uh, Robert De Niro's character in Heat, and even as similar as the you know the love interest that comes in later and kind of suddenly. It's handled much much better in Heat. So Heat is like the perfect example of a heist movie. Uh, everything is perfect in that. And this is just kind of a precursor to it. There's things that are wrong. You kind of see how Michael Mann's getting his repertoire up, figuring everything out, you know, and just he perfected it with Heat. And this is just kind of a, a stepping stone to it. He also did, it's kind of interesting because he also did pretty much the exact same thing as Heat before he did that uh, called L.A. Takedown. So he did Thief, L.A. Takedown, and then Heat. So he pretty much did that story three times. And by the third time, he perfected it. I mean, Heat is amazing. So I think that's a really good way to think of it. And like I mentioned, the score is very similar as well. With, again, Robert De Niro's character is a thief, a jewel thief. And he's really good, but wants to get out of the business. And that has a big twist in it with uh, Edward Norton's character. It's a good movie, too. I like that one. And they used the similar tactic as that big acetylene torch I talked about to cut open a safe. So, I mean, this is kind of a, a definite precursor to those two movies. So it's I think it's worth a watch for that. And it's also worth a watch if you like Michael Mann. He doesn't have very many films, so this is the first one that he did. And after this, he did a movie called The Keep. And then he did Manhunter, which is... Uh, I did a review for that not too long ago. It's a uh, Hannibal Lecter film. So, and then, you know, he did Heat... And Public Enemies, uh, Insider, Collateral's awesome. So, yeah, he doesn't have very many films on his on his plate. So, definitely a good one to check out. It, I watched it on Netflix a while ago, and I think it's still on there. They just got rid of a bunch of movies, so it might be taken off. But it's worth a watch if you have <clears throat> not interested in anything else, or you just want to see a good heist movie, and then you've seen a lot of them. So, uh, I'm giving it a three out of a five. So, decent movie. Not the best. Obviously, I would recommend Heat before this and the score. And then, if you're in the mood for another good Michael Mann movie, uh, Collateral is awesome as well. But, um, worth a watch if you're a Michael Mann fan. Okay.